There's a new study that shows that 90% of the live music industry lost income due to COVID-19 from March until very recently. Of the musicians surveyed, 41% report selling their instruments and equipment to pay their bills. Others are living on loans that need to be repaid. And what's the upshot? Well, nearly half of South Africa's live music workers may quit the industry for good. One of the people involved in the study, someone who is very close to the music industry in South Africa, Gwen Ansel, associate of the Gordon Institute of Business Science in Pretoria. Gwen, good afternoon to you. Music has always been a precarious job, hasn't it? But made a lot worse by the pandemic. But those numbers are simply horrible. Hi, Jeremy, and hi to the listeners. Yes, music always has been a precarious employment. But I think one of the issues we have to be aware of here is that this is a worldwide problem. All musicians everywhere, and not just musicians, but all those involved in the music industry, have actually been hit in some irrevocable ways by the pandemic and by the restrictions. We got to level one, things were starting to improve. There might have been a sign of a recovery as people started venturing outdoors again. Then uh, overnight we hear about the second wave and that could be devastating. Yes, it certainly could. And I think a lot of musicians, traditionally the industry relies on the period up to Christmas for income because everybody knows there will be no income between January and Easter. So if that headline that I saw earlier today is correct, if half the live industry was to quit, what would that mean for the sector? Would there be no music industry at all virtually? Well, um, to nuance that slightly, um, we asked people how they saw the prospects and half the, nearly half the industry said that they were considering quitting. So a lot of this is very conditional, and it depends on what kind of policies governments put in place. But yes, if half the music industry were to quit, we would lose employment, we would lose export earnings, and we would also quite significantly lose a source of psychological aid and comfort, which one knows that an awful lot of people have used during the pandemic and the lockdown. But what your survey also found, Gwen Ansel, is that uh, people have become smarter. Uh, they've looked at uh, new online strategies of performance. Yes, that's true. And in fact, I think there is a tendency to be somewhat pejorative about the industry and to actually say, oh, musicians are disorganized, they're out of touch, they're not business people. 88% of the people that we talked to were in one way or another trying online solutions. The problem is, firstly, that South Africa, unlike many other countries, has a massive digital divide. And those people who would normally listen to, let's say, a genre like gospel, which is the hugest genre in this country, maybe in areas not only with no Wi-Fi access, but possibly with no electricity. The other issue is that it is hard to monetize this, and people are still learning how to market it properly. Did you, I wonder, ask your respondents if there was sufficient support from the Arts and Culture Ministry, the department? Oh, indeed we did. And um, we asked them both about the support they had applied for and used and how they felt about that. And um, actually, the results were not particularly impressive. Um, only 21% of those who had applied actually received from the Department of Arts and Culture Special Fund, although some others did receive from small business funds. But I think, firstly, again, we have to set this in a worldwide context. Bureaucratic structures, including fund application structures, are not usually very friendly to a largely informal economy. So there were all those difficulties. But what was more distressing to us was people citing both perceptions and experiences of the people they applied to, not understanding the industry, not being polite, possibly being biased against certain categories. Some classical musicians said they felt there was a bias against classical music. Um, some people who were not born in South Africa said they felt there was a bias against those from other African nations. Now, these may only be perceptions, 
but I think it actually impacts on the effectiveness of a program. And there's clearly a need for communications between the department and the industry to be improved. Just a, a quick answer, if you don't mind, but I can't help but wonder, as musicians battle, as we said, to put food on the table to pay their bills, whether the pandemic and all the associated difficulties has had an impact on their creativity, on their output. Oh, yes, although this is not something that the survey looked at, but it's something I'm very aware of as a music writer. Not only are people trying experimental online solutions, but people are also trying some really interesting ways of putting music together across long distances of collaborations based on people not being in the same continent, never mind in the same room, and actually writing material which actually reflects on the pandemic and on the emotions that people are going through. This is one of the reasons we need musicians. We can't afford to lose them. Gwen Ansell, thank you very much indeed. A well-known music writer also associated with the Gordon Institute of Business Science. This is Thursday lunchtime.